Um, I was actually in the middle of working on a project and I thought I would just record a bit of it for you guys. I am actually working on um, something for Peachy King Stamps. This is using the newest release here, so it's not available as of uh, the time I'm recording this one um, for purchase, but it will be available soon. So what I have here, this is called Halloween Hauler Scarecrow Driver, and it's just this image here that I stamped on white cardstock using my Ranger Archival Black Ink. And then what I did was I um, already started coloring the car portion of it. And I used um, just my personal color pencils. I don't use Copics. Um, I started off with uh, powder blue. And I colored the entire car um, really lightly with the powder blue. Then I used, um, I'm trying to remember the colors I used here. Then I used, oh, I didn't use that one. Um, I think I used a blue electric and I just did some shading here I used that and then I used um, aquamarine and just blended that out just to give it like a bluish tint and finally to finish it I used a uh, French gray which is almost like a brown I'm trying to find it here Okay, well, I use French gray. I can't find it in my pencil yet, but um, that's basically it. Oh, here's a quick shot of how I store my pencils. Sorry, my craft is really messy, but I just store it like this, and then um, I go through whatever colors I need, and then just pick them out of this. I also store my blender pens in here, um, I have my blending stumps, all my different sizes. I store my sanding block, which I use to uh, clean off. Um, my stumps, I store my Prismacolor pencil sharpener, uh, a few regular pencils, some of these blending markers, and I also use the Prismacolor blending marker. This is a marker actually for the markers, but it works really good for pencils too. In my shot glass here, um, I just use some Gamsol type stuff. This is um, odorless odorless mineral spirits that um, I got from Hyatt's, which is my local art supply store. It's their store brand. I'm sure you can find this um, several other places too. I, like I said, I stamped this on some cardstock. This is actually from Hobby Lobby. It's their ultra thick white, heavyweight, I don't know what it's called, heavyweight cardstock. It's the thickest that they have there. And it works really good in my experience for the Prisma color pencils. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm just sanding off some color off this block. Just to clean it. <clears throat> and I'm also gonna use um, this is just a regular piece of computer paper. I'm gonna put underneath my image. Um, just the colors. I like to test out colors on here first before I actually put it on my image to kind of figure out what colors I want to use. So what I'm going to do now is since I already colored last with the French gray, I am just going to kind of blend it out a little more. So I'm just taking in my shot glass here. I'm just doing small circles. I was working on this uh, kind of late last night. I didn't get to finish it. So I thought I would just record while I work. So. Not really any tutorial, just kind of like me coloring. <laughs> okay. The thing about these Hillbilly Holler stamps is they have little marks in the stamp where it is um, like hash marks. And I've been using that as my guide for shading, um, saturating the color so it's darkest there and then away from it. So that's what I've been using as a guide. Um, I really don't know anything else to use. So next I'm going to start working on this tombstone here and the front bumper of the car. So this right here is silver. I'm just checking out that color. Let's see if I have a, um, a black. I'll use a little black. Um, we can use a little bit of white, which is, I don't have to pick it out, it's just white. 
Um, we can use I'm just going for my colors here. If I could find French gray again, I would use that. But I don't know where I put it. Sandbar brown. I'm gonna probably do a little sandbar brown. This is like a a light brown. That's it. What I want to use. Actually, we can probably use some of this. Uh, there's a colorless blender pencil. We can use that too. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, there's a little um, hash mark starting here along the side. I'm going to start with the silver pencil. And starting there, I'm just going to lightly fill in. light I'm putting hardly any pressure um, on the pencil okay then I'm just going to use I'm actually going to use one of my teeny tiny ones you can I also get these from Hyatt's which is basically an artist supply store but you can get these um, I think pretty much anywhere Joanne I've never seen them at Michael's but I'm sure you can get them there too I have never seen them at my Michael's so some on there and really light circles on my silver and just filling it in. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the sandbar brown and just go over that really lightly too but only shading in some so i'm going to do right near those hash marks and i'm going to do this kind of crack section here and we're going to do just the bottom front of the grave tombstone okay then i'm just going to blend that using the same stump You can see it has a little bit more dimension between two colors. Then I'm going to go in with the black. And black's one of those colors that you don't really need to use a lot of. So I'm just going to go very lightly and very, um, like not a lot, moderately. I'm just, just tracing the very, very bottom. Here, that tombstone, that very, very top of the crack area. I didn't press hard at all. So I'm going to go in with the same stump same end. I'm not going to clean it because I'm just going to blend all those colors together. Now I'm going to bring that color out as far out as it can. So I'm starting here and pulling it as far away from the origin. And then do the same thing here. So I'm starting here and I'm just going vertically. Pulling it up. And then starting here and I'm just going to pull that down until it ends up crack. So that's it. I'm gonna go back in with um, the silver and just add more color here. I'm gonna do the reverse now. I'm going to blend it down. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in with my white and in the middle section I'm just gonna Drop some white color. Maybe a few dots of white. And then I'm going to blend that in circles. Okay. 
That's my tombstone. Now, for the bumper of the car, I want it to be near the same color, so I'm going to just color everything with the metallic silver. Just very lightly, hardly pressing down. And then I'm just going to go in straight with black. Wait, blend it first. Duh. I'm just giving you guys the wrong steps. I'm blending that. That's what I always do so that it's not just so white. I always uh, put it with the lightest color down first and then blend it. Paper. And then I'm going to go in with the black. And just right near the, what's this called, the license plate. I'll just do a few little lines on either side of that. And then just right here, I'm going to do a few little lines. And then I'm going to blend those out. Okay, so that's, now the bumper is colored. Um, I'm going to move, since I'm still using gray shades, I'm just going to move up here to the top of uh, the hood, I guess, not the hood. I guess the hood and the um, window? I don't know what that's called. Sorry, my English is like bad today. I don't know why. Um, doing the same technique, coloring it with the metallic silver first. And I'm going to blend it in. You can see there are only like two or three step color combinations for the shading. It's going a lot faster, let's say, compared to um, the Halloween card that I did yesterday. That took me forever. It took me about three hours because I was using about uh, ten color combinations per section. So, And the shading was much more in-depth for that one. So I just did a little bit of black, and I'm now sorry from the light. I'm going to blend that all the way across. little bit of black and then I'm going to put a little bit of black on each of these sides and just blend that down. Okay. For the steering wheel, just going to do a little silver. And just blend it around. I'm just going to horn here. I think I'm just going to do that with uh, black. Just a little bit at the very bottom and just blend it to the white. So. Okay, let's see. I think I'm going to do the chair also the same way because I don't want it to be just coloring on the hash marks here. Sorry if the light's all messed up. There's little hash marks here. I'm just coloring black in there and then I'm going to pull it out just by pulling it up. Okay. And that's close. And the pumpkin wheels. Okay. Now um, I'm gonna do the pumpkins. That seems to be like a, a big color combination here that we're gonna do. Um, before I do that I'm just going to put some colorless blender over all my gray parts. Just so a little bit more blended. And for me, this kind of steals the color. That means you know it doesn't need to be blended anymore. And it makes it shiny, the color pencils. Should be. I don't think I colored this last night over this. I'm just going with the color with blender. Oh, I just realized I forgot to do the mirror. So let's do that with black. Actually, let's do it with gray. There we go. There. Okay. Now let's go to our pumpkin, like I said. The, uh, the pumpkins are always, always give me the most grief, as I can never find the right color combination. So what I'm going to do now is just pull out all of my orange shaded colors. Um, a lot of orange, no, it's orange. Orange is here. I think I used, I think I'm gonna use a red. And I use like a nectar color. I don't think I'm gonna do the pump out onto these guys.
Sorry, I'm just talking to myself. Sorry. No. Okay, those are the colors that I use. Uh, I've got some oranges, some yellows. I've got like a peachy tone. Um, it's called Nectar. I think I used that. And I used also a brown, which I'm going to just take up two for sandbar brown. And we'll just do chocolate. So, let's put these colors to the other side there. And I'll just name the colors as I use them. The first one I'm going to start with is Nectar. Um, this is like a peachy color. And this is going to just uh, help uh, us build a color onto our pumpkins. You're probably wondering, why are you using a flush color? This is a, a pumpkin, not a person. But I just like it because it gives me a little bit of a warmer undertone to build on when I'm doing the coloring. So that's just my opinion. I'm not like a professional. <laughs> so, so I'm going to do here. going to get a clean end of a stump, I think it's this one here. I'm just cleaning it by um, rubbing it on the sanding block. These are paper stumps, so they get cleaned pretty quickly this way. I'm trying to keep the tip sharp since we're going to be doing some small sections here. Okay. Now I'm going to just do my smallest stump. I'm going to be just blending these in in circles. And this nectar color, when it um, is blended, it looks more like an orangey peachy. You can tell. Or well, maybe you can't because this light is horrible. There you go. It's a little orangey peachy. Let me focus this more. almost done with that. Okay, so now uh, as you can see, our color is starting to build. We've got our first layer down of this nectar. I'm going to put that away because we're not going to use that anymore. I only just use that for the um, main part. Um, next, I'm going to go in with a shade of orange. I'm just going to tuck these out. Spanish orange is way too bright for me. Um, let's do goldenrod. We can keep. That looks about right. Um, yellowed orange we can probably use orange let's see mm. i am not sure whether or not i actually want to use the prism color orange it's really bright i have here actually we're not going to use orange we're going to use pale vermilion that looks about the shade i want to use and this is yellow ochre which is a little bit too yellow for my actually yeah it's a little bit too yellow I like to use um, like an actual yellowy color. Actually, sable looks about right for highlights. And then for the dark sections, I want to use poppy red. And then, of course, I have chocolate and sandbar brown. So those are the actual colors we're going to be using for the rest. Here. Okay, so we're gonna. We always start from. Well, I always start from light to dark. So we two or medium to dark. Let's see which one I want to start with. Okay, the first color I want to start with is Goldenrod. And this is where I'm going to start to do my shading. I'm just going to start at the first pumpkin wheel. I'm going to start right at the top of its, um, let's say, head. And I'm just going to color right at the top. Okay, so I'm just coloring the top. Then we're going to skip down and color the bottom. And leave the middle that peachy color. Okay? Same thing for here. Starting the top, going the 
bottom, leaving the middle that peachy color. For the two wheels, we're actually just going to color the top and not the bottom. Since, you know, it's the bottom of the wheel, we're going to color that top section. And for the face, we're going to color um, the bottom, which is actually at the back of his head, down to the, under his mouth here. And we're going to color the top of his head. So it's all the way across to the back. All right, that's what we have now. I just found some, you guys, sorry if I'm like going crazy with this camera settings. Okay, I've got the same uh, stump that I used that previous uh, nectar color on. I'm not gonna be changing the colors of these stumps uh, or cleaning them as we're going progressively darker, so it should be fun. So I'm just dragging that color from the top down across the face and then from the bottom we're going to pull it up. And I'm not doing circles here, I'm just kind of uh, going up and down. Okay, there. Let's do the same thing. We're just dragging that down, dragging this down, and then for the face, do the same thing. Okay. Now as you can see we have a um, like a band across each of the faces where it's the lightest color. And that's gonna be uh, for our highlights. So we're gonna try to keep that as clean as possible. Next, I'm going to go in, so I did goldenrod, I didn't put that because I'm with that. I'm going to go in with the yellow and orange, I believe, and do the same thing. But as you can see, I'm only going to color the top. I'm only going to do the smallest section. Because as you go progressively darker um, in shade, it'll actually um, blend out more, so you don't need to use it as much. And I'm pressing still fairly lightly. Gonna look a little better. Okay, next I'm gonna go in with uh, pale vermilion, which is our most orange color. And for this, I'm actually gonna start contouring the colors in between each section of the pumpkin. So with this, I'm just actually gonna highlight every other every other section of the pumpkin, um, just doing the tops and the bottoms. Same thing for here, just every other. And since this is a dark color, we don't really need to use so much. Okay, then for the face, the same thing. Okay. You can see only I only did like a few little lines, that's all it takes.
then I'm actually going to go in with the shade of Poppy Red, which is like an orangey red. And I am just going to um, do the tops and the bottoms again super lightly. Over that other color that I just did. So it's going to blend over. And then I'm going to blend this in circles. You can see lots of contrast and color, um, and I think that looks pretty good. I mean, you can, if you want, go back in with uh, a lighter color like Sable, and just in those light parts to make it look a little lighter. And you'll know which are the lightest parts of your pumpkin face because they'll still have that just that nectar color, and that's what I'm doing. I'm just going in with those light colors um, there, and still using that blend stump, a blending stump. Uh, just blend that in all the way around the face. Because sometimes pumpkins are a little yellow in a part of the fullest and around it. So there we go. That looks about um, right. Well, right how I want it to look like. Um, let's see what we have to do next. We have to do um, the clothes of our little guy here, the hoods just little accessories so this part you can make whatever color you like i'm going to put him in a red shirt that's kind of like the farmer's color i'm going to use crimson red and for crimson red i tell i generally don't use any other color but since this is a very small section that i'm going to be coloring i'm going to make sure that my pencil is nice and sharp Nice and sharp pencil tip. And I'm just going to keep treating one side of his cuff. Then from there I go straight out with a little bit of color. And I'm going to shade one end of his other cuff. And then we'll eventually bring it down um, elbow. And then just his collar. So as you can see, not a lot of color there. Didn't lay down a lot of color. And when I use red, um, I actually like to use the Prismacolor blending tool. Um, this is a marker. I actually like to use that because I, I feel like it pulls it out more and I have more control. So I'm just going to pull it down. Oh, sorry, I'm just turning my image here. And pulling it up. Then I'm going to bring this down. Okay. And that's his shirt. Not 
got like a little bit of spin showing. And I'm thinking um, he would probably would if he wouldn't. So I'm just going to color that sandbar brown. And I'm going to do his other little arm actually in here. Nothing too fancy, just a little bit of brown. And Next, we have his hat, his overalls, his hat, also going to be sandbar brown. And just do that really quickly. Make it look like a, a straw hat. There's some little divots here um, in the stamp. I'm just going to assume that's where the color is supposed to be. I've never colored this stamp before, so I'm just kind of estimating. Not a lot of color there in the hat, but I'm going to use uh, a big stump. Which I'm actually seeing. A bigger one. And I'm just going to quickly just run this overall. So. There. It's done. Not too difficult. Um, going in back in those little areas and putting in a different color. Just for some dimension. I'm using chocolate. And I'm just going to blend those areas a little bit. Okay. I think we're all set. Almost, almost done with this stamp. I know this is kind of labor intensive, and you're probably sick of watching this video. So if you stuck around this long, thank you. <laughs> Um, I'm going to just pick in some black, actually, do I want to do black? Black, I think if I can really find my French gray, I might have left it in a little bit now. That's the color I usually go to for, um, gray, like, shading. We can use black, or we can use, um, metallic silver. I really don't have a lot of gray shaded pencils. I have need to go buy some more, but... Okay, I'm just going to go in the hand. We go on the outside of the pinky and the outside of the thumb and the other two fingers are always there. So that's set. I'm gonna just take in my little bit of spirit here and just blend that a little bit. The, the glove's still gonna be pretty much white. Doing some shading there. Then let's do the same thing on his knuckles. Um, I think I might go in with a little bit of black and just do. His last knuckle and the first one. Everything else left blank. And then just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So that's set. Let's do his overalls. Um, I usually like to use navy for a denim color. Let's see, it's violet blue. Okay, here, peacock blue. This is one of my favorite shades. And I'm just going to do the same, similar with what I did with the shirt. I'm going to do his overalls, just very lightly. Color, and then I'm going to go in with my um, marker tool. So you really don't need so much since it's just a really small area that needs to be colored. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with my marker tool. Don't make sure you're using a fine tip end. Cleaning it off so the red's not on there. Okay. There we go. All I have left to do is um, the hood of the car. I'm just going to go in with this is 
Some powder blue for the eyelids here. I'm going in with that. I'm going in with some peacock blue. I'm not even going to blend this just yet. I'll blend it in off the end. Just um, for the highlights of that. Then I'm going to go in with some palette gray. for the eye color, I'm going to probably use like an orangey color, Spanish ochre or Spanish orange, just color a little bit on each side of the eye, he looks really sad, tired, now I'm just going to blend all those colors separately, so I'm going to first do the gray and the blue. Then making sure um, that I change stumps of the yellow. I don't want any of that blue or gray in my yellow sections. Okay. Last I have to do just a little horn. I've got a metallic gold here. That'll work just fine. Her image all colored. Um, it looks really labor intensive, but I don't think it took too long. Oh, quickly realized I'm missing a little handle here that I can make gray rather quickly. Um, I like to do at the very end, I like to go around the outside of the image um, just to do some shading. And I like to also go in with um, sandbar brown just so that um, it's not floating in the air. So I'm going to just start and make some around here, kind of estimate how it should look like, and where the shadow should go, and see where maybe I'll just do it this way, just so it's not floating in the air, and I go in with a big stop, and just blend that out. little guy is like not just floating in the air okay then I'm gonna go around with um, this powder blue as you can tell by the size of this pencil I use this a lot when I'm doing blues or shades or grays um, I'm just gonna go on the outside of this image kind of dark oh I just realized I forgot to do the hat band I've been rushing sorry <laughs> And then I fill in like any negative space that shouldn't be colored. So then we'll do some of these here. We'll do some part here. And then some part here. A little bit there. Let me just quickly color his hat band with some peacock blue. I'll just do the center, color the center, and blend it out. Um, I then, I like to use the marker still to do this part, because like I said, it gives me lots of control. I'm just cleaning it off here as much as I can. The last thing you want is any remnants of any other color. Okay, pretty clean. Then I just go around and do circles with the blue all the way around the shadow. Mm -hmm. 
if you don't have a, um, a prism color marker, a colorless blender, you can just use a stump. I mean, I don't, I just like to do it this way. I don't know why. So that is pretty much our little guy now. Um, he looks pretty much ready to go on any card project. Um, what I like to do the last thing is I always take my trimmer and trim it down since I always use a card that's bigger. And I just go to what I think is the outside of the project and just trim it. So sometimes I just use scraps. So. So I hope this little coloring tutorial gives you some ideas on how to color with your Christmas color pencils. And don't be intimidated. I guess you just start slow and see where it takes you. Thank you so much for watching Crafting with Christine. You have a great day. Bye-bye.